Good day everyone, this is Chris with the Ancient Scholar and uh, as promised this is going to be uh, video number two in a series on um, airway pressure release ventilation or APRV and uh, as you can see we uh, have the ventilator, the Dragier Vita XL and it is set up into uh, APRV mode. I don't have my alarms set so there are probably going to be a couple alarms that are going to go off on and off as I work through this video. Uh, so that we're going to kind of pick up where we left off last video and just kind of add, build on to what we talked about. And, and really what this video is going to be focused on is um, on um, how the ventilator looks and kind of how the patient will look in airway pressure release uh, ventilation or APRV. Uh, so here is the uh, Dragier Avita XL. Um, it's probably f not well known to a lot of people, but it, it is one of the, the major ones used in the ICU at the, the specific facility I'm at, and I'd like to thank them for allowing me to uh, do this uh, video for you guys today. Okay, so let's just go ahead and talk about the real basic settings for APRV. So down here I have APRV set. So I have my time high set at about 7 seconds. Um, with a pressure high of 30 centimeters of water. Um, obviously we base that off of a plateau pressure and when we uh, were in volume control ventilation. I have my time low set at uh, 0.5 seconds and my pressure low set at zero. That allows a very efficient and quick um, pressure release. So if we take a look at the uh, pressure waveform here, um, so I have pressure and then time, what we call a pressure time scalar, you can see that I'm spending a significant amount of my time at pressure high. I have a very quick pop off and then I'm back up at pressure high. What does that do? Well that again just uh, to, to place uh, puts emphasis on recruiting the alveoli, keeping them open and preventing de-recruitment um, by having these very very short um, pop-off times um, where I'm at my pressure low in this case for about 0.5 seconds. Um, again, this is. I think it's very important that we realize and understand that um, one of the problems we can run into uh, with patients is if they are not spontaneously breathing, they are not going to be able to um, blow off CO2 very effectively. And really, you want to have a spontaneously breathing patient when it comes to um, APRV mode. Because um, what can happen, and I'll try to simulate that here, you can see that the patient, and I'm just kind of uh, simulating spontaneous breaths here, this patient can take spontaneous breaths at pressure high and pressure low, and you can see those little breaths. Uh, those little breaths, you know, they're only, you know, what, uh, about 140 to 180 milliliters per breath, but they add on to the big breaths we see you know, the 675, 700 milliliter tidal volume breaths uh, when we have pressure release. So collectively that helps blow off CO2. So APRV isn't a particularly good mode when you have somebody who is completely apneic. It can be used, but you, you really have to be careful about running into uh, issues of CO2 retention and, and respiratory acidosis. And I'll just give you guys a little quick view of the test lung here. And you can see how it stays open, very quick release time. It opens back up, it stays open, stays recruit, release, and back up. And again, what does that do? Well, that um, keeps the alveoli open, keeps them recruited, uh, gives a, increases surface area for oxygen diffusion, and uh, can hopefully um, help with um, oxygenating patients who um, are Unate, we are unable to effectively oxygenate and uh, ventilate to some extent otherwise. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. Again, um, hopefully you found this, this helpful, and um, as always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.